Hello and welcome. So today Shazad and I are at the London Excel and we're here for the Classic Car Show. We're here to see the best of classic cars because everything is here and it's going to be a really exciting show. As Kevin says, this is an incredible show. This is actually the fifth edition of the show. They have over 700 cars on display and 100 of those are driving up and down the avenue in the middle here. They're celebrating a number of things here, including anniversaries, 60th anniversary of Mini, 50th anniversary of the Italian Job movie, 100th anniversary of Bentley and 100th anniversary of Citroen as well. They've got coys over there with loads of cars on display and they've got talks and panels going on. Now, while Kevin is going to go around and talk to some VIPs and get some incredible interviews, I'm going to go and have a look at some beautiful cars like this Aston Martin right here. Baz Bungish from Brand Events and he's the organiser of the show. How's it going Baz? Yeah, very well. It's, Great. Been, it's been good. Uh, a good start to the show. Excellent, excellent. Are you finding, because you did it last year as well, didn't you? Indeed. This is our fifth year. So it's your fifth year. Yeah. So you've really kind of got the USP sorted here. Definitely. Yes. Tell me, what do you think are the strong points of the show for classic car enthusiasts? Well, we have probably the best selection of classic car dealers here in the UK represented. Um, so I'd say about 70, 75 of those are here selling cars. Um, we have our unique Grand Avenue feature, which always goes down very well, where the cars move, as you may have seen. Um, and again, you know, it serves London, the southeast, for, for those classic car enthusiasts. I've got to ask you this. Are you a car enthusiast yourself? I am. You are? <laughs> of course. Go on, tell us what you own. Have you got a special car? Or what's your What's your favourite car? Uh, your favourite classic? My favourite well, classic? Well, I would say favourite classic right now. I'd love a, a Lancia Aurelia, right. if I could get one. Yes. Um, I have a few, if that's worth mentioning. Um, a 500 SL, uh, the one R107. Yes. I have uh, a 500E, which right. is the left-hand drive uh, saloon 124 W124 and an old turbo salt. All oh, right, okay, yeah. well, so a few. fantastic. See, they don't just organize, <laughs> he's an enthusiast as well. Thank you, Baz. Wonderful. Cheers. Have a great I hope the show is very successful. For Thank you. you very much. Thank you. Cheers. Cheers. As I mentioned earlier, they're celebrating the 50th anniversary of that incredible film, The Italian Job, in which those three minis, the red, white, and blue one, are involved in that incredible heist through the middle of Italy. Now, those cars are actually here. Well, not the original cars. Ah, I say that, but actually, this Aston Martin and the red Jaguar are the original cars from the movie. If you remember, the Aston Martin is the one that Michael Caine picks up from the lockup. And the guy says, well, where have you been? He says, I've been off in India making, uh, shooting tigers. And that's how he made his money. And he says, well, you must have shot quite a lot of tigers. And he goes, ah, I used a machine gun. That was the gag in the, in, the, in the movie. But anyway, this here is the actual car from the movie, as is the Jaguar. But what they've done is they've got replicas of the three minis. You can see two of them over there. And the van, the bullion van that was used in the heist. The original Mura that, of course, met its demise in the tunnel. There's an orange equivalent over there. And the actual bus that you see at the end of the movie <laughs> from which the three minis are, are thrown out. Very, very exciting display here on this stand. Michael Scott, I say, is the who's who of classic cars. Michael's been in the business of classic cars for many, many years. I know this as a fact. He's a good personal friend as well. But he's also the founder of the International Guild of Special Specialist Engineers called Tigos, and also the founder of the very, very famous 96 Club. Michael, how did this all happen? Basically, because my love of cars, because my father was an engineer and um, I suppose I was indoctrinated into engines and Bentleys from my youth and consequently I caught the bug, became an apprentice, gave up being an apprentice, set up an insurance broking business, set up a guild of specialist engineers, set up a motor racing club 
renting the racetracks, taught lots of famous people how to race, Eric Clapton, Mick, Nick Mason, Dave Gilmore, Rowan Atkinson, and I owned this car, my Lancia, for since I was 17, and I've still got it. Wow. I was about to ask him, has, he's got to have something special. So you own this rather lovely Lancia. Tell I, us a little bit about it. Well, it's 1934, it was a limo, and after the war, Steady Barker, the famous journalist, decided he wanted to go racing, so he bought the limo, cut four foot out of the chassis, took the body off, and put a DB24 bonnet on, and went racing. Because he was the president of the VSCC, they let him race it. And when I bought it from him, because he bought the Villarese Millimilia Astura, um, they wouldn't let me race it. So I used it for 10 years, and then I sold it, but then I bought it back. And he sketched this body, and I built it. I finished it six months ago. Fantastic. And we have it here now in all its glory. Michael, thank you very much. So not only can you just look at cars here at the Classic Car Show, but you can even buy them. And there are a lot of classic sales. Just on this stand alone, there's this beautiful uh, three-liter CSL Batmobile BMW, and you've got uh, a Testarossa on this stand, and a beautiful Targa Porsche 911. Over there, there's a Lancia Stratos and other amazing cars, including a Cobra. But I tell you what really caught my eye was this thing. This is a one-off bespoke. It's called a Bentley because it uses Bentley components, uh, but it actually looks like something out of the 40s some kind of an old silver you know the uh, uh, the Mercedes uh, flying silver cars the racing cars but it's not it's a Bentley it's got an old Bentley 6.57 liter engine in there it's got uh, a, a space frame custom built chassis it was actually uh, commissioned and built about 15 years ago but seven years ago uh, the owner of this company which is a, a horsepower hangar in Lincolnshire actually bought the car and then fully restored it and changed a lot of the parts upgraded the brakes and all the rest of it believe it or not it's road legal check out the number boy uh, wo after wo bentley styled after a 1948 car but like i said built 15 years ago it is magnificent it's one of the crazier things that you see here the interesting thing about this is you don't know if it's modern or classic let me go find some actual classics so right now we're here with beryl little and beryl owns this amazing jaguar xjs but beryl's known as three jags beryl Tell us why you're known as Three Jags Barrel. Well, I have three Jags and I love Jaguars. The Jaguars I have are that one, the XJS V12, also um, a 1971 E-Type, modified significantly for racing, and I have a modern day classic S-Type R Supercharged. You are quite a collector, Beryl. Do you I have anything else? Um, yes, for oh my, my everyday uh, living, I, I have um, a Range Rover Sport Supercharged. I like a big, fast engine, you see, and I have a great little uh, Mercedes SLK. <laughs> and summer. this is all just for your use? Well, indeed, Oh, my yes. God. So, Beryl, yes. you're in a haven here. I know. It's wonderful. It's a sweetie shop of cars. Fantastic. Wonderful. I'm Thank you. It. Thank you. One of the incredible things about places like this is that they show you that the impossible can be done. I mean, you look at this. This is a 1964 Jaguar E-Type. It's a barn find. You look at it and, I mean, surely that's beyond help. But actually nothing is beyond help when it comes to classic cars because commission somebody like this place, which is a classic motor company, and they will turn something like this into something like this. Just as well. Now this car is. Wouldn't you like to be seen in that? If you've got an old car that you find and you think it's beyond help, stop. Ask somebody like these experts and find out if it can't be turned into a concourse car like this. I am here with Raymax. That's what he's known as. And Raymax has started the Afro Classics Register. Tell us a little bit about that. Right, well, the Afro Classic Register is just a group of um, Afro Caribbeans, I guess, who have classic cars and we like to get together and do what classic car users do talk about our cars maybe have a drink just general get-togethers go to shows stuff like that fantastic so how did it come about um well it's st <laughs> i started it because i guess whenever we go to a show you do, you see like maybe in a, in a jaguar club you might see one sort of caribbean or african person or whatever but you never see a group and you never know whether you, it's somebody you should approach from whatever angle so I thought why not have a go and just start up one of our own if you like. So how long has it been yeah. going? 
2015. Think 2015 started, and yeah. how many members you got a lot of members um, now now we've got about 45 members that's pretty good yeah that's yeah. pretty good so yeah hopefully this year we're going to recruit a lot more as we go around to the shows fantastic yeah well i will say i have seen them at one show already lots of music lots of food and lots of fun so look out for them they're going to get bigger thank you you're welcome thank, thank you, thank you. This is a 2.8 liter Ford Capri. Now this car right now is on sale here at 26,995. Now I remember in the mid 90s, I was saving up to buy exactly one of these cars. I was up to about two and a half grand, yes, 2,500 pounds to buy one of these. I figured I need another 500. But at that point, I was tempted away by a Supra, so I never actually owned this. Unlike Kevin, who did actually own exactly this type of car, exactly this sort of car. And he's just been spending all afternoon rubbing in how good that experience was. I think I need to get one of these now. Right, so I'm here with James Soul of Renaissance Classic Cars. They're based in Ripley, Surrey. James, tell us a little bit about the stand you've got today and tell us a little bit about Renaissance Cars. Okay, so we're, we're a new company. We uh, started two years ago. Uh, we mainly focus on Porsches and BMWs, but emerging and modern classics. Uh, we brought five cars down with us today. So we have uh, behind you, we've got a 968 Club Sport, one of 117 of those, so quite rare. In the corner, the other red car we have is a, a E36 M3, one of the three litre ones, and there's not many of those that are left. Uh, behind us here, being uh, currently polished by one of my colleagues, is a 908 GT, so that's a, a rare manual gearbox, slightly lighter than the standard cars. And then our other side here, we have a silver E46 M3 with an unusual spec. And then lastly, back in the corner there, we've got a Sierra Sapphire Cosworth being a two-wheel drive model and a previous owner spent a full small fortune doing that car up and replacing every nut and bolt. It looks absolutely amazing. So as I was mentioning earlier, they have over 100 cars on display and actually for sale here on the Koi stand at the London Classic Car Show. Over the next couple of days, they're going to be auctioning these off. And let me just run down a few of these. We've got a 1978 Mini 850, the one with the Union Jack all over it. That's estimated at between 10,000 and 15,000 pounds. There's a beautiful 1962 Aston Martin DB4, estimated at well over 400,000 pounds. They've got Renault Turbo 2, they've got Lamborghini Uraco, Yalpa, and even a Diablo. They've got Ferraris, all kinds, including a Testarossa and a 456, tons of 911s, and they've even got James May's Rolls Royce here. There's a crazy Ford Capri up there, and a Porsche Carrera GT estimated to go for 650,000 plus, and a very rare and exclusive exotic Maserati Tipo birdcage, which is actually going to be driving up and down the Grand Avenue. A couple of my favorites, Mercedes 560 SEC, labeled as a 1000 SEC, this one, and of course, the Lotus Elan. This is one of those places where you either eagerly bring your checkbook or you lock it far away at home and don't come anywhere near this place with it because you'll end up buying something. All right, so I'm here now with Darren Sullivan and Darren's the organizer of Waterloo Classics. What's that, Darren? Um, Waterloo Classics is a car club based in London. It's a monthly meet club. I started it now, uh, four years ago now, because there are so few things to do in London with your classic car. Because I got tired of having to drive an hour just to get out of the city and then an hour to get back. That's a minimum drive. Just to go to a car event. And it was frustrating. So I thought, I'm going to do something in the city. Get people to come in or stay in and, and have fun in the city. And Waterloo Classics is the result. Yes. I hear you're quite a collector yourself. Um, unfortunately, yes. I've got too many cars, I think. Go on, just tell us what they are. Um, I have my MGB. Yes, that's lovely. Um, and I rebuilt this from a shell. Yes. I've got a BMW 502, which is in another, another stand over there. It's a project I'm working on at the show. That's a 50, 1950s BMW. I've got a Triumph Vitesse, which is kind of done up as a kid racer style. It's kind of a midlife crisis green car. Um, I've got a Triumph 2500 um, S. That's kind of a fun little project that I haven't had time for. And I got a Morris Minor. That was a family heirloom from a friend. Can you believe this? The serial so, car collector. But it's so. a fantastic habit to have. Have a great yeah. show. Oh, thank you have very much. Show.
Oh boy, it's nice to sit down for a bit, isn't it? It is, but I mean, couldn't you walk around all day? I could, fantastic it's fantastic. What, what's been your highlight of this show? I think for me, and I love so many cars, but you know I love Ferraris and I thought there were some amazing 246 GTs here. The Aston Martin DB5 was amazing. But looking at this show this year, for me, any car you're into, the best of it you'll see somewhere here. For me, the incredible thing is actually just being here because as you know, I've been in Dubai for the last few years and I've watched it from afar and always thought, you know, I'm, as a Londoner, I'm like, I want to be there, you know, and this year, I'm actually here. I'm Listen. just happy to be here. Listen, in Britain, we're all anorex and I think you can see the excitement and the emotion. People here just love these cars, don't they? They are fantastic cars here. There's a ton of great stuff and some stuff I wasn't expecting to see, some stuff I really fell in love with. I have one little disappointment though. I already know what it is. What's that It's then? a spy who loved me, isn't it? <laughs> The it's Spy Who Loved Me didn't make it. The Lotus Esprit, as you know, my favorite ever car. I was expecting to see them here and I didn't see a single one of them. I'm a bit gutted about that. Well, listen, you're here just today. I'm here tomorrow. If I actually see one, will you give me 50 quid? No, what we'll do is we'll put 50 quid into the Lotus Esprit buying fund so that I can make sure I buy one and bring it next year. Yeah, you got it. <laughs> <laughs> Hope you, you enjoyed again. that coverage. Thanks a lot. Bye.